The urgency to get something done perhaps stems from plateauing labor numbers recently. Initial jobless claims had started to come down from their highs back in March, but they ticked back up last week to 898,000 above estimates. There have been 64.52 million jobless claims filed since the coronavirus lockdowns began, 40.3 percent of the American workforce. What is the Trump administration going to do to help struggling Americans before the election. Let's bring in Labor Secretary Eugene Scalia. Welcome, Mr. Secretary. Thank you for being here. So Secretary Mnuchin and Speaker Pelosi are supposed to be talking literally right now. The lines of communication have been open between them, but have you spoken to either the Secretary or the Speaker, given them the statistics you see at the Labor Department on the jobless situation, and have you explained the urgency? Well, I uh, have remained in uh, touch with uh, Secretary Mnuchin and his team as these negoti negotiations have gone on. And Liz, uh, as you know, the president would very much like to uh, see an agreement. From the perspective of uh, unemployment assistance, it's been frustrating. Uh, when the uh, $600 a week CARES benefit expired in July, uh, Republicans sought uh, to extend it, if only temporarily, to have a continued discussion about what the right amount of a federal benefit would be going forward. But uh, Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, would not would not allow that and, and would not uh, allow even a stopgap measure during negotiations. That caused the president to step in and find a way to use FEMA funds to uh, continue uh, unemployment benefits. So, yes, we'd, we'd like to see something done. I know Secretary Mnuchin's uh, working hard at that. At the same time, let me emphasize this second point, which is that uh, the unemployment uh, right now is much, much lower than was being predicted back in April, where we saw estimates that third quarter unemployment would be nearly 16 percent. But we know that actually in right. September right. It, was, it was under 8 percent. And uh, this morning, uh, our Bureau of Labor Statistics put out its state by state numbers, which are uh, very interesting. We see that actually a majority of states, 26 states, have unemployment rates below yeah. 7 right. percent. Um, what, what, the, the problem uh, lies particularly, we see from that report, in some of our largest states, especially California, where unemployment barely came down in September. It's at 11 percent, much higher than that 7.9 percent national average. New York, Illinois, also really high unemployment rates in the neighborhood of 10 percent. Uh, definitely the numbers have absolutely come down from those ridiculous highs. But, you know, we want to stick to the people who are struggling the most right now, the currently unemployed. That's under your purview. Airlines say they're going to be forced to cut jobs without more stimulus. The hotel industry, we had the CEO of Best Western tell us yesterday right here that nearly 50 percent of hotels in the U.S. will default on their loans, which, of course, could trigger more layoffs. Which sectors do you see needing it the most, the stimulus right now? Well, airlines, we, we know, are a sector that uh, have been particularly affected, uh, as has uh, hotel and lodging. Uh, these are uh, industries that I've spoken to the president about. I know uh, he has concern there, too. That's part of the reason it's been important for him uh, to uh, uh, get relief um, and, uh, and, and, and in order to continue uh, unemployment benefits. Uh, but again, uh, that said, uh, we see uh, much better signs in the economy right now uh, than were being projected back in the really difficult days that we had in, in March and April. So I think the uh, uh, task before us is first to maintain the policies uh, the president had set that were so vital in building that amazing job market we had pre-COVID, where we had record low unemployment and where we've learned recently we had really extraordinary wage growth for people at the lower end of the economic scale. Those uh, policies of uh, low taxes, uh, eliminating unnecessary regulatory burdens. Liz, when you ask what we need going forward, that's an important part of what we need because it built the economy the Absolutely. first time around. We will need it going forward. Um, and, and, uh, and But, of course, we, we do want to continue to get uh, these unemployment benefits to people who need them, even as we yes. grow the economy, get them back to work. I would imagine, as Labor Secretary, your definition of success would be to see businesses reopen and the millions of employees who are still furloughed or jobless to get back on the job. Understandably, though, with 8 million Americans infected, 220,000 killed by COVID, they want to be ensured they go back safely. Your 
OSHA team, Occupational Safety and Health Administration, has put out COVID safety guidelines, but it doesn't appear that there are specific and harsh legal penalties for employers who don't follow them. Um, your team told us that there are 10,810 COVID-related complaints to OSHA. We asked how many citations have been issued. They did not get back to us, uh, so we had to rely on AFL-CIO uh, numbers and they say only two I would, citations I would, I would rely, have been I would rely issued. on those, Liz, but tell me what they told you. Well, first of all, we got it. We put in calls to them as well. Ninety-six class actions. Uh, we understand, though, that when we're looking at specific citations, we need to know, at least employees need to know, that if they do go back, and I, I presume most of them do want to, Mr. Secretary, that they are going to have employers, most of them are caring about their employees, but that all employers will be held to a standard, and it appears your guidelines don't have teeth. What are you going to do about that? Well, uh, our programs do have teeth, Liz. It's funny, you know, you were began by saying that you imagine uh, our priority was to get people back to work, and I almost at that point interjected, uh, get them back to work safely. Uh, that has, in fact, been a priority okay. for us from uh, very early on, o OSHA began providing uh, guidance related to COVID uh, all the way back in January. It's put out extensive uh, guidance for employers, employees in about 20 different uh, industries. Uh, and it also has had a, a very active uh, inspection and investigation program as well. This is something that I've emphasized from early on, that we have existing regulatory authorities. I, I said from, from uh, March, that uh, were available to us to use, that we would investigate, we would bring cases, and, and we're now doing that. And there were uh, the critics, uh, the AFL was among them. Uh, the former Obama administration officials were particularly loud about this, uh, telling people that OSHA was not conducting investigations. That was false. And we're now seeing the result. Uh, we've brought nearly 100 uh, citations against companies uh, where we found that 10, they uh, were, were not uh, Out of well, 10,800 complaints? Well, uh, it, it, Liz, you know as well as I that a complaint does not necessarily mean that, in fact, there's a problem. We have investigated uh, every one. Absolutely. Uh, and, Absolutely. And, but, and, and but Mr. Secretary. There is, when we found that there's a violation and that it was within the company's capacity to address the problem, you know, there were PPE shortages, uh, for example, which can be a mitigating factor. But to date, We've brought nearly 100 cases, and we will continue to do that. So, as I said at a White House podium briefing uh, back early in the spring, the cop is on the beat. There's not a case we haven't brought because we didn't uh, have a, a, a regulation in place. But finally, I'll, I'll emphasize this. Uh, you know, I've been doing uh, labor and employment for uh, nearly 30 years. Never uh, in, in my career in the area have I seen employers as focused on keeping their workers safe. They know they I need to do that. that. To, I get that, open. but they, they know but they need to keep you're their talking about safe as well, and and we are helping them do that through the guidance, even as we maintain and we're that on the side of very business. active enforcement program. As as a business network, we absolutely understand the legal, you know, heavy weights that are put on the shoulders of most businesses. But when you're looking at the meat packing plants where there were major outbreaks in the chicken processing plants, I just think, and I'm not the only one who would look at this and say, wait a minute, you want to get people back. Don't you need to put teeth in those guidelines and be much harsher about it? I mean, you can't really depend on all employers. I wish we could to deal with this properly, because this is the worst and strangest and most devastating pandemic in yours and my lifetime. And you can't just leave it up to that. I mean, I have your returning to, to work guidelines that I that we pulled up here. And it says these are, you know, they're very specific here and we can put it up. It says these guidances are not standards or regulations. Your own employer, the U.S. government, didn't exactly follow it during the Rose Garden ceremony, Mr. Secretary. And so many people got sick at the Rose Garden September 26 ceremony for uh, Amy Coney Barrett, which you and your wife attended. And we were very concerned to hear that your wife tested positive shortly thereafter. So you can't really depend on everybody to follow these. So isn't it on your shoulders as the labor secretary to ensure and put teeth into something like that? Well, uh, Liz, uh, you know, I was very pleased, let me say, first of all, to 
uh, attend that ceremony for uh, Amy Coney Barrett, who is an exceptional judge, an exceptional person. I think the American people have come to see that, and uh, and, and I think will be a, a terrific justice. Uh, I, uh, with all respect, Liz, I don't think you understand the OSHA regulatory program. It, it has been a two-pronged approach. We have issued guidance. That guidance itself is not legally binding. But as we've made clear from very early on, we have a number of regulations that are legally binding. We will bring cases when they are violated. And we also have statutory authority that we can use to bring cases. And we have done so. I said from early on we would. We have done so, and uh, including with respect to meatpacking. Uh, so uh, there are teeth as well as the guidance. It's a, a two-pronged strategy, guidance, but enforcement as necessary. And we will uh, continue to do that in a measured way, uh, recognizing, again, as I said, and I don't think you dispute, the great majority of employers are very focused on keeping their workers and customers safe. We want to help them do Absolutely. it. Absolutely. But, but those who fall short, uh, we, we will uh, bring uh, uh, enforcement actions as needed. We will be watching it. And thank you, Mr. Secretary. We do hope your wife is feeling much better. Um, and we hope she's recovering. And we're watching this story closely. Please come back and well, join you know, us again. I I, and I it is indeed. Uh, I, I, I appreciate your concern. And it, just to clarify, she did not uh, test positive for more than two weeks after that event. And she's, she's doing well. So thank you. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Good to hear.